up. I'll start, I'll start my speech shortly. Hold up. Give me one, one sec. I need to send a few texts first. You know, check out my likes, my reasons. You know what I do. <sighs> Let's see. Damn, I didn't do all my last posts, bro. That's kind of unlucky. Being a social media influencer is hard, I guess. But anyway, you know, let's get to the speech now. Social media addiction is becoming an epidemic in this country. The Daily News Journal stated on August 25th, 2019, that 72% of Americans engage in social media, uh, according to a research study. And given the increasing studies that correlate social media usage and various mental problems, there's a serious issue with social media. And with that in mind, I'm going to convince you today why social media addiction, especially with teenagers, needs to be seriously addressed. First, I'm going to go over the problems associated with social media addiction, um, the reasons why people are so addicted to it in the first place, and finally offer solutions that will help people step away from their devices and just, you know, live life better, I guess. And so before I dive into the problems with social media, let me just address that social media in moderation isn't a bad thing at all. For many of us, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, etc. is really the only way for us to reach, you know, with friends, families, and whoever else. Excited things happen in our lives, and I think it's natural for us humans to want to share that enthusiasm with others. So, you know, with that in mind, you know, social media is a bad thing when you become addicted to it, when it consumes us and becomes an integral part of our being. That's when it's bad. And so the first major problem is the link between heavy social media usage and depression. According to the iPaper, dated December 10th, 2020, researchers from the University of Arkansas report that young adults who use social media for more than five hours, or, uh, five hours a day, were three times more likely to become depressed in a six month period than those who were on it for less than two hours a day. Now, while five hours might, might not seem, or five hours might seem like a lot of time, you know, like, almost like an exaggeration, for my observation of friends, family, and people I know, I know many of us more than spend more than two hours a day on social media, with some even, you know, hitting that five hour mark. And, you know, why not all of us do it? I think, you know, we all spend enough time on it that it does raise concerns about becoming depressed. The second issue is that social media addiction, addiction affects sociability. According to one parenting confessions column in the March 14th, 2022 publication of the telegraph.co.uk, one father sadly laments on his failing relationship with his son. He writes that he imagined his relationship with his son to be one with, you know, playing, uh, playing sports, hiking, or checking out festivals as he got older. But, you know, now it's been reduced to just, you know, his son checking in only to send him more TikTok notifications or just sending or showing him an interesting video on TikTok. And while this one testimony is like, I guess, kind of extreme, you know, it's one of many about how, you know, teenagers are glued to their phones and, you know, are failing to have proper social relationships, even with their parents. And the final issue is that excessive, excessive social media usage is comparable to drug addiction. According to a study conducted by the U.S. Fed News Service dated January 12, 2019, Participants in a study that struggled in gambling tasks by choosing poor decks had greater social media use than those that did better on the task. This correlates with substance abusers with, or with addicts performing worse than those who stayed away. This links social media addiction and substance abuse with a similar deficiency in decision making. And given how severe some of these issues are, these causes, have, these causes must have some legitimate weight, and it all starts with their brain. According to the Daily News Journal, the one mentioned earlier, social media addiction occurs because it excesses the brain's reward system. Checking likes and comments leads to spikes of dopamine that become addicting. Another reason is that social media constantly distracts us with the presentation of new information. Our brains fatigue at simul simultaneously concentrating on different tasks and blocking out, you know, various information. Scrolling through Instagram or YouTube mindlessly is much easier than actively engaging with the content. It can lead to us spending a lot of time on the, you know, on the app, just kind of doing whatever. And the final reason, according to the Tampa Bay Times dated September 7th, 2021, is that social media invites upward social comparison. This basically means that, you know, the private jets, crystal clear beaches, and expensive dinners dilute our understanding of reality. We compare ourselves to these people and that jealousy can lead to sadness. Now, fixing social media addiction is not easily done given its ingraining in our society. But there are ways to stop it. Well, the government has tried in the past to censor large apps like TikTok, uh, those endeavors usually turned out unfruitful, given you know, some constitution stuff. <laughs> and turning to app developers won't really help either because you know, these same app developers are the one that wants us on the apps on the first place. However, there are a few app developers that are trying to fight back against addiction. The Kate Argus dated June 23rd, 2018, and even Nick Fitz, a behavioral researcher at Duke University. He and a group of developers developed an app that delivered notifications in three time increments, morning, afternoon, and evening. And he found that reducing notifications completely, at least grouping them up in these three distinct times, you know, really reduced stress levels drastically. And while this app isn't available on iOS, or this app is available right now, I know that iOS users have 
access to many different notification options in their settings. You know, try turning off notifications for a day and see how your mood improves. You know, record this and see what happens. Maybe you'll feel better. The next solution, according to the telegraph.co.uk, as of June 11, 2018, was to turn off phones completely in school. You know, phones weren't always around back then, and people were doing just fine. Going through the school is distraction free, getting our work done, and you know, being able to relax at home with their phones provides a nice work life balance that you know will lead to, I guess, a better mental health. And the final solution, and the one I advocate the most for, is just being you know, just getting out there and enjoying life, you know, picking up hobbies or just rekindling you know, your love for old things. I know for me personally, you know, I use my phone four to five hours a day, I, it's not great, but I know on days when I'm hanging out, taking photos doing videos, playing games, or whatever else, I know that when I'm with my friends and I'm hanging out and enjoying my life, I know that my phone time reduces drastically. And on those days, those are the ones I remember. Not the days where I use my phone all the day, or all the time, but yeah. Anyway, that's it. It's been a really stressful week, so time to look at funny memes and see what happens. <laughs>